This is Dave Acachella of Philomena's in Sunnyside, Queens. Today, I'll be spending the day with him to find out what it's really like behind the scenes making New York's most iconic dish. Dave, I'm normally the one eating the pizza, but what's it like owning a pizza shop in New York City where being a pizza snob is basically ingrained at birth? When I decided to open up a pizza shop, I had to make sure it was an awesome pie. So I, I really spent a lot of time on making a really good dough. It was something that was really special. And it's what it's like, I get to eat pizza every day. It's a pretty cool job. Yeah, I'll it's a very take cool it. job. So this is my great uncle, Nicola, and that's my grandmother. He brought her over. He had three restaurants, he was very successful. There is a tradition that's been carried down through generation to generation. And I still have my great grandmother's rolling pin. And it was actually my great grandfather's rolling pin, probably circa 1900, 1901. And this was brought from Italy to uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey, where my great grandmother lived. And given to my mother, and now I have it. So this is like passing the torch. So my ovens, I have electric Moretti 40 ovens, and they're great um, because I could do my square pies and my round pies in there. Now my square pies, when they come out, they look like this. They're beautiful, they have light, airy crispness to it. All right, John, let me show you how to make a pizza. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Apron, because you got a black shirt on. Why don't you get a good flour all over yourself and the filamina set. Do you want me to actually make it with you? Yes. You all can right. do this. If you insist, I'll do you it. You can do it. If you insist. for this shop. Let me see. I do okay? You look great. It'll be good, don't worry. I had a viewer tell me once that I looked like a guy who just works at a pizza shop. I look like an everyday New Yorker. I see it. Should we do Jersey Shore? Because they're both from Jersey originally. Hey, there you go. Let's do that. All right. Jersey All right. Shore. How many hours a day do you actually spend in this shop making pizza, making dough? So I get here around like 10 o'clock, prep up, make the dough, service time, then afterwards I do all the pre-fermentations, and then I cut up my square dough. I only open up for dinner at the moment. Soon we're gonna be opening up for lunch as well. So I'm usually here for at least 16 hours a day sometimes. How long does the dough take to ferment? Usually three days is a, is a nice time. The square dough, I like to have right around three days, so that way you can release the natural enzymes and you can digest the, the, the dough itself. I feel like we're about to go do some surgery here. <laughs> you ready to make some pizza? I still haven't touched anything. I'm extremely clumsy, I lack common sense, and I can't cook, but you're getting me, you're getting me excited. I have some hope. You could do this. I got the look, what can you say? <laughs> New York style pizza is around 60%, so this is a little bit more lucid. It's, it's uh, not as... Firm. So the whole pie starts out this small. Yeah, so now we're gonna slowly stretch it out. Well, this is a, a personal pie, this is a 12 inch personal Oh, this is 12 pie. inch, okay. Top portion, this is smooth side. So now these, the bottom is facing upwards. This is the coarse side. So we're gonna compress and move up. Stay within press so that way you can define it. So you're gonna stay within the middle, okay, that's fine. So now what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna move it around again, but again, just watch what I do. It's kind of like sculpting, it's like art. Yeah, exactly. I used to play with clay when I was a kid, so. Oh, I, you're a natural. Now here comes the fun. We can do Nepal the style, but one way I like to do it, kind of just using our knuckles and kind of stretching it out little by little, a full rotation of, of the dough. So we're gonna go with, right where the crust is and just kind of move it around just a little. Start moving around. Yeah, there you go. But you want to move from... Okay, we're gonna put it down. He made this look so much easier. Sorry, my, my dough happens to be very fragile, so that's where we're gonna have something yeah, like sure this happen. Yeah, I'm sure that's the reason. Hey, hey here we go! It's so it's like here. Uh-huh, and just kind of go from... Under? Uh-huh, underneath, uh-huh. But you want to go... What do I do with the thumbs? You're, well, you're, you're too inside the dough, so that's why it's kind of ripping. But that's okay, I got a lot of dough. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're gonna get it out, we're gonna get the dough, stretch it out, right? Do like a little patty cake. So you just wanna find the edge of the crust and kind of go back and forth. It's like a wet towel. You, uh, <laughs> you've clearly done this a few more times than me. I was into claymation, yeah. so I would like, make my own like little sets and stuff and sets and stuff like that. Yeah. I have another one, just in case. <laughs> no offense. It was a miracle that I could figure this out. <laughs> How many pies do you think you've made in your life? A lot. <laughs> oh, man, good question. But, hundreds uh, of thousands. Hundreds of thousands, yeah. I'm sure, that's, I'm sure, I'm sure that's up there. Because yeah. we're gonna use gravity to kind of like stretch it out for us. So I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna go like this. See, I'm on the edge and back down. This? Yeah. And back down? Uh-huh. And. Keep on doing that a few times, it'll open right back up. There you go, okay, hey! If my wife could see me now, I don't think I've cooked anything for like four or five years. So now we're just gonna top it off. So on this one, it's gonna be sausage, pepper, and onions. Spoiler, I've had this pizza here before in another video. 
And I said that Dave knocked it out of the park with the, the smell. It smells like the boardwalk. <laughs> minus the hairspray. The minus, the, minus the hairspray and the <laughs> Red Bulls. That's right, go in the middle and just kind of push out the sauce. And now you just kind of go clockwise. Right, this, this I like, this I can handle. <laughs> I finally found something I'm good at. Use Santa style tomatoes, which I, I absolutely love. Jersey Shore, it's sausage, pepper, and onion. So green peppers. Five or six? Uh-huh. So, so you, need to, you need to envision the different slices here. Right, right, exactly. Jamaican Red Hots, which I like. They're a little on the, they have a nice kick. How old were you when you made your first pizza pie? Oh, wow, I was a kid. I used to make pizza with my mom all the time. And we used to make the square pies. So it was a thinner crust. And, and it was also very easy. Some cheese, and we're gonna top it off to make all these really fun pies. As a matter of fact, I still make those pies that today. She's used to make potato pizza. Yeah. I wish I was making pizza as a kid. You know, it's a different world. I used to spend time with my mom in the kitchen when I was younger, and that's how I really learned pizza, but just kind of understand each dish. Because once I started working in the restaurant industry, yeah. it was something like, oh, I knew all these dishes. All right, how long do we cook for? Four minutes. And how long does this normally take you? Because this felt like it took me forever. It should take like a minute. This is the smell when you walk into the pizzeria. Okay, you want to take this out? Why don't you go first, show me how it's done, and I'll try it. Now you're talking. All right, under the middle and pull it out. Yep. I think I got it. Wow, it's like a baby here. I don't want to drop this. Oh, man. Perfect. Perfect. I'm a natural. Nice. That was the easiest thing we've done all day, I think. Get down and dirty. I got a little crooked there. This is the most effort I've ever put into a food video before. I'm always consuming, not creating food. It's actually, it's the other way. Gosh, that part. Yeah, no, no, you're good, yes. Okay. Yeah, this is actually the funnest part of the job. Can yeah, I just do this all day? <laughs> I used to work at a restaurant called Da Silvano, yeah. and we had outdoor seating on 6th Avenue between Bleecker and House, and yeah. my favorite job was putting the cheese. Where the wind was coming from, you had to like do it on an angle, and it would just go right into yeah. the plate. <laughs> Look at all that Parmesan though, wow. Woohoo! This is a real Jersey slice. Mm. Some could argue you have the best job in the world. Just eat pizza all day. I was trying to get people to come in for his employees and I had somebody posted on Craigslist, eat pizza all day and get paid. How many applicants did you get? Three. Only three? Only three. I would have found at least like five or six. I read an interesting quote from an article, would you cut school to go to Joe's Pizza? Who told you that? <laughs> I, have so, I have sources. Joe's was always that go-to slice. Not Ray's, it was Joe's. Growing up in Jersey though, we don't lack in good pizza or mm. good bagels. I never felt a need to rush to the city. At local pizzeria, Alfonso's was it's always a go-to place. And that's one thing I love about pizza because it's always about having a good time. I was fortunate enough to work at a restaurant called Da Silvano. Da Silvano was legendary, it's one of the most famous and successful Italian restaurants in, in Greenwich Village. 2009, my boss came up to me and he wanted to put a pizza oven in the back. So I started making dough and started practicing and all that stuff. I was getting pretty decent pies over there. Flash forward to a place called 21 Greenpoint. Homer Murray owned the, the restaurant. It's still there, it's a really awesome place. It's, but it wasn't until Gina Sorbillo came into town. And Gina Sorbillo is like this master pizza maker from Naples, yeah. Italy. And I was like, I have to work for him. They called me up and said, nah, that's okay, we don't need you. You know, don't, don't bother coming. But I showed up anyway, because I knew they needed me. So I, I just kind of hung out in the, in, the, in the front for like a half hour, 40 minutes, until I heard, Davide, come on, I know, I'm sorry, come on, come on in, because I knew they needed an extra hand. I was always passionate about making pizza, but it wasn't until I worked with these guys I truly had the passion to make pizza. Your dough is so light and airy that I'm almost done with my first slice. I don't feel full at all. A lot of New York pizza spots, you get that kind of sinking feeling in your stomach after two, three slices, but not here. Uh, but I also ferment the dough. It gives it a nicer flavor and uh, enzymes to kind of break apart into the dough so that we, we could digest it. If you're celiac, you're, you're out of luck, I'm sorry. But my mother's able to eat my, my pizza. Uh -huh. And she has a, a gluten allergy. How did Philomena's come to be? This is the name of one of your daughters? Yes, so I was looking around 2015, 2016, and I found this place. Yeah, I always wanted to open up close to house. And how long has Philomena's been here now? Uh, it's over five years. Do you think Queens deserves more respect for pizza? Yeah, sure. There's Mono's, there's a lot of great pizzerias out there, and I'm fortunate to be in that, that, that circle of uh, pizza makers that kind of kind of elevated the, the, uh, the, uh, the passion for pizza in Queens. Spicy sausage oh, just hits different. Yeah, yeah. It really is like walking on the Jersey Shore boardwalk. I mean, you, you name this pizza perfectly, I have to say. Greatest compliment anyone has ever served you here. Italian family, they came in during the pandemic. 
and right in the court towards the town when, when letting people back into the city and stuff like that. They just said they loved my pizza. Neapolitan or Italian style pizza is so much different from New York style. They really appreciated the effort. The, uh, just the margarita square with the drizzle of uh, olive oil and basil. And so rain. Good. And rain. Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. If you sat out here, how many people you think would say hi in the next hour? Uh, a, a few. If we have to talk about your, your signature slices, I think your square is probably near the top of the list, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah absolutely. It's light and airy. It's got a nice crunch on the bottom. So let's, let's see if the, have a quiet moment where you can hear the crunch. They heard the crunch, I felt the crunch, I tasted the crunch. Oh, the solid foundation of that crunch. I know you're always so busy behind the counter, but do you ever look and just stare at people's reactions, like the reaction I just had? How does that make you feel? But when I first opened up, the counter person said to me, that guy just took a bite of your pizza, took the crunch, and then he looked at it again. He was like, he was like, how is this happening? This is amazing. What's going on? This is an <laughs> optimal going illusion, on? <laughs> yeah. We've had so much fun inside, and it looks like a really fun job. You get to eat pizza for a living, but there might be people watching who have a dream of opening up a pizza shop. What are some of the harder things about it, what you might not notice on the surface? The biggest issue yeah. is help, getting, getting a good staff in. For years, I had such a big problem getting the right people in here. So for you, it's not the hours, because you told me you were here 16 hours a day, just about every day of the week. Yeah, I mean, once I got more help, then I could just kind of dwindle that down a little bit. But, um, but I really enjoy what I do. On a Monday, I just make dough, and that's like my vacation from the rest of the week. The Sunnyside community, it's extremely diverse. What are your customers like? That's the beautiful thing about Queens. Every ethnic background known to man on earth that lives in Queens. So yeah. just what I had to do was, you know, non-pork items. I have a beef pepperoni, which I actually love, but prefer over the pork pepperoni. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Hey, Don, Mr. Doing? Quinn, how are you? Good, good to see you. Good. I have to get put back to work. More to this business than just making pizza, right? Yeah, yeah, he had to sell it. You can work the register and help out Dominic over here. Maybe relieve him of his duties while he helps me make pizza. Okay. <laughs> uh, world looks a lot different from this side of the counter, I gotta admit. <laughs> I think you have way more fun than we have filming this stuff. Well, because we get to eat it all the time. Yeah, you get to eat it and you get to make it. I'm telling you, if I worked here, it would be bad news. I would just be taking slices all the time. How, how many slices a day do you eat here? Like three to four. Three to four? Yeah, I cover 800 slices a year. Well, you gotta check for quality control, so you have an excuse. Yeah, there you go. Full dish, it's gonna be your handle. You're gonna put your other hand here. Give me that look easy. Like that, pulled over. This. Oh, I see. Push down in. Oh, perfect. Throw it there. And now we're ready for a pie. My wife would be laughing watching this because I really do lack common sense. This is like my worst nightmare trying to assemble even a box. I think I could do it after 500 attempts. All right, I got the next customer. I'm uh, a little nervous. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Uh, this is the Jersey Shore with the pepper and sausage. Okay. Yeah, it's exciting. Got my first customer. How much cash? Oh, yeah, I love you guys. He gives you, and then it'll tell you how much to give back. Change fourteen fifty. All right. I've never worked a cash register in my life, you know. True story. This is pretty surreal, actually. Here you go. <laughs> cool. Thanks. You're welcome. You want a receipt? Right hand. Yeah. Imagine as if you're just holding it. I mean, like. Good. Just like well. And just walk it out. All right, let's serve it. I may quit YouTube. I may quit YouTube for this. There you go. Thanks, man. Enjoy. Sure. I work here. Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, anyone, everyone, wherever you are. Hi, it's you, Rob, 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 how are you? Stay out of the way. Good to see you. My name is Don Credible Pizza Guy. Welcome to Filming as a Science Like Pizza. Let me reverse the camera. You just started your TikTok live stream where, you know, I do a lot of YouTube stuff, but you are a TikTok star <laughs> for your pizza making videos. How on earth did you get into that? Uh, man, I'm still trying to figure it out. But um, I, I developed the name Da Incredible Pizza Guy. Let me get a sticker. Da Incredible Pizza Guy. Don't ask me how I came up with the name. I did, actually, I did it because of the fact that I wanted to monitor my kids on TikTok. See this girl who sang across the street. I saw she was live, so I was, I was like getting into it. Like, and then I heard this guy, uh, and we're gonna go to Jackson Heights, maybe get some tacos or get a burger somewhere. So, and uh, it turned out to be Kenny. Kenny, yeah. And uh, after that, I tried to try my pizza. And after that, I couldn't get rid of him after that. It works here. Um, I started getting into uh, the live streaming, and that was a lot of fun. So I've been live streaming for like a year and a half now. All these people over there, hey, doing? I'll break that one second. <laughs> How has that actually transferred into business? Do you ever have people walking off the street and they say, hey, I'm, I'm watching your stream right now? Like, so we have tourists from, you know, uh, in Times Square that, that figured out how to get here from Times Square. Wow. But you are the source of the videos now. You are the host. You're the show. 
How important do you think that is going forward for businesses in the, you know, uh, in the I, 2020s? Queens is not a designated pizza town. It was, you know, I had no other choice, but I have a lot of fun making all these videos. I, I've been in New York for 26 years now. I worked as a video editor. Yeah, I mean, TikTok is where it's at these days. How many pizzas do you serve in a given day? So I like to keep the, the slices, uh, the, the, the display filled with pizza, but I usually like to have at least 14 pies in, in the window. I make like 100, 120 pies in, in, in like, uh, on the weekends each, each night. I think I'm gonna leave this to the professionals. I, I, I have a newfound respect and admiration for the hard work these guys do. The fact that they're on their feet all day, putting this much effort in to the pizza and dealing with customers and dealing with money, not for the faint of heart. Now that you've spent the day with one of the top pizza makers in New York City, in this video we show you another backbone of New York street food culture, and that's breakfast carts. You'll find out why New Yorkers are obsessed with these ones.